Hi, my name is Deborah Johnson, and I am a Bible teacher and life coach. And today we are going to continue with number five in our series, Lighting the Fire. This, these are to be short teachings to give you a glimpse of some things to enable you to study them out for yourself. Heavenly Father, thank you for this for this opportunity. Help me to stay focused and to keep the message short, but I also pray for those that are listening that they listen to, with a, with a prepared heart to hear what you want to teach them personally and then to go study it out and think on it for themselves in your precious son's name amen okay um first off i like to share the gospel let's go to romans 5 8 and 9 <clears throat> it says but god commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us we were sinners, we were ungodly, without strength, and even enemies. Much more, though, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We, before we became believers, we, we uh, needed a savior. We were bound to, to hell and the lake of fire. It's not a good place if we don't. Um, access what God's done. He sent his son to be a fully satisfying sacrifice, propitiation for us. All we do is believe. It says we are just, made just, justified by his blood, Christ's blood. He paid it. His blood paid fully for all our sin. Once we believe, we are saved. So, if you haven't done that, do that today. It's the most important thing you do. And then God will give you his spirit and teach you. And you can have a journey of faith. Okay, today what we're going to do is talk about key insights that enable you to allow God to work within you, work his word in you effectually. Um, we're going to, this is going to be a fast lesson <clears throat> and a lot of these verses we've already uh, read, um, we'll read a few, but this is basically a, a synopsis of how, what God's way is. Number one, let's go to Ezra 7, 10. God's way in many, many ways has always been the same. Oh, he wants us to rightly divide and uh, the, the word of truth and to see what he's written directly to us, the body of Christ. But there are interdispensational truths throughout the Bible, very important to read all of it. And this is one of them. And it's just one of many, many verses in the Old Testament and in Paul's epistles that talk about our preparation. Um, Ezra chap chapter 7, verse 10. For Ezra had, had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. While we're not under the law, we're under grace. We have grace doctrines that are to lead us and to be our guideline. And what we're to do is to prepare our heart to seek it, to know it, to acquire it, not just knowledge, but understanding so we can wisely apply it in the de details of life so just like Ezra he prepared his heart to seek the law and to do it to apply it in the details of life and not only that but to go on and teach it so ha the first point I want to make today is preparing your heart and mind and Focus above, Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Purpose to do it. As you renew your mind, it pushes out worldly doctrine, and it fills your mind with the mind of Christ. That's the goal, to be um, conformed to Christ's image. Number two, walk by faith. In an earlier lesson, um, we've talked about um, truth to go, about walking by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Make it a priority to 
know it, but then to walk it out in the details of life, to live as who you are in Christ. You yield, you uh, let or allow God to work in you, and you become who you are in the details of your life. It's a pro lifelong process. <clears throat> Number, that's number two. Number three, keep the motive in the forefront. We are constrained by the love of Christ. What God says um, is prioritize time and build it into your system. Second Corinthians, let's go there. Second Corinthians uh, 4, 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man, the physical housing we live in, perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. How? Taking in the word day by day, thinking on it and applying it. Do it. <clears throat> um, verse uh, number five. Be led by the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, adult sons and daughters of God. You can't do it if you are led by your feelings, the course of this world, or even religiousness, even sound Bible teachers in the grace message. If you're led by them and what they say about the word, you are exalting them and their teaching. Make it your own by looking up the verses and thinking on it and be convicted, fully persuaded in your own mind by the word. It gives the ability for God, the spirit, to teach your spirit directly, knowing exactly what you need. <clears throat> um, and then what happens is it stirs up. Um, God stirs up the doctrine as you walk through the details of life to bring to the surface what you need to use wisdom in situations. It's your guide. It's your rule. Um, and uh, 2 Corinthians 1 6 talks about, Paul, Paul talks about uh, Timothy stirring up the gift that's in him. We need to stir it up by thinking on it and taking it in on a regular basis. Okay, number six, meditate on the word after you read it it's important to read it's important to study study morphs out of reading uh, as you do it god does it in you gives you the inquisitiveness to go on and look up words and think about them meditate on it ask yourself questions think do I really understand this? Um, am I living this? What is God saying here? Have I really understood what it's saying? Look in the context. There's many things that you can do. We'll talk about some study skills and study methods later. Um, and what we do is we talk and pray to God about it. Asking God and trusting him, he's going to lead you by the spirit. Number seven, prove all things. That works the doctrine as you um, as you study it for your and look at the verses for yourself and just think on them. The living God teaches you individually and it prepares you. First Timothy four eight. But godly, I'm sorry. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. All things. It's the most important things. It's profitable. Reaping what you sow. It's profitable. Having promise of the life that now is. Your life here on earth. It will help you in the details of your life. Your thinking. It'll mature you. But it also will help everyone around you. And you'll teach the angels. It says and of that which is to come in the future. It's actually going to enable you to function in the position God has for you in heaven. Um, number eight, purpose to live it. Romans 6, 7, and 8 teaches you how to do that, how to live as who you are in Christ. Choices to yield, to let God teach you, and to be at the forefront, lead you, 
and to be who you are in Christ. Number nine, remember there's a layering effect in the word. It's an eternal book. If you remember, we talked in Isaiah, I believe it's 55, his ways and thoughts are so much further than yours. Think about God in the third heaven and you as in this tiny little speck on earth. His ways are so much farther than what you can even think. He, he does exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think. His ways are have an eternal depth. So there's no way in this lifetime you're going to be able to get it all. And so it, he layers it. And his process is to grow you up unto maturity, unto that perfect man throughout time. And in your lifetime, get as far as you can. Um, it's doing it God's way, though. Not focusing on man's way. Uh, hyper-focusing on one man or men and their the preachers and teachers or even what I'm teaching or even commentaries or books or self-help. That sidetracks you from God's way. Get in the book directly. It will teach you. Just trust it. It's a walk of faith. The pieces will be arranged. Be prepared to read and reread. I read Romans over and over and over, Romans 6, 7, and 8, over and over and over, and again, Romans, and then go on, read all of Paul's epistles, the whole Bible, but come back to Romans until you feel and you see that you've got a good, solid foundation. There's a depth to God's word. Uh, Ephesians three eighteen. Um, it's a prayer that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ. That's the fullness of Paul's gospel, the grace gospel, to understand the fullness and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. He's forming an edifice of doctrine in you. He's laying the foundation in Romans. He goes on in Ephesians and gives you more advanced doctrine. Proceed in God's way. The curriculum he's laid out. Uh, number 10, like I said earlier, reading morphs into studying. Listen to God, the Holy Spirit, as he stirs things up and as you're reading and stay there in a particular passage. If you think there's more there that you want to talk, think about, um, I believe there is more there for you. And then proceed. Don't get stuck on one passage. Go on if you can't understand any more. When you come back around, God will teach it when you're ready. Um, the edifice of doctrine is in Romans 1.11. It's talked about in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul lays the foundation and another builds thereupon, but we're responsible how we build on that foundation of Christ. And that's what you want to do. Be um, clear that you want to be established, but then you want to go on and build this building so you're established, secure in the faith, and that you're able to teach others also. Um, it's a, a process very similar to um, the progression of a developmental man it, it, from an infant all the way up to adulthood. You go through stages and it's a slow process of trial and error and sowing and reaping. But and you get um, you're under teachers, tutors and governors as a child, but you're released from that and you're given more and more grace to apply what you know until you're uh, finally an adult and you are, it's between you and God, you're not your parents, you and God, and God is teaching you there's so much more, even as in your developmental, but in a spiritual sense, we went over Hebrews 5 and in 1 Corinthians 3, we don't want to stay carnal babes. We want to grow up into maturity to get some of the meat. Um, um, I wanted to also talk a little bit about God's way. 
Satan wants you to distract you from it. There's many, many things. The distractions in your own personal life, plan. Be prepared like Ezra to, to uh, push those out of the way. Do whatever you need to do to do you what you know you need to do in Christ to stay focused and to keep building and growing. Um, man's opinions, man's um, criticism of, of what you're doing ought be nothing to you. Your focus is above and what God has for you. His will for you is to grow up uh, onto the, the fullness of what God can teach you to that perfect man and to walk according to what he has put in your heart. That's walking perfectly. And so um, trust God's process. Start reading, even if it's 10 minutes a day. Build on it slowly and prepare because perilous times, Paul says in first in Second Timothy three one, perilous times are coming. I believe we're at the end of the dispensation of grace before the rapture. It doesn't say that we're going to be out of uh, tribulation. We're not going through the great tribulation. There's tribulation, perilous times, and seducers and evil men. The best we can do is prepare spiritually, not only for ourselves so we can help others. Heavenly Father, thank you for this. I pray the people think about this process. And as we go on to talk about some other keys to understanding the Bible um, and key components to help us along the way that, that uh, whoever's listening to this message, they go on and they really hear what your word says in your precious son's name. Amen.